getting results. This is News 6 at Noon. Now at noon, a possible wrong way crash kills one person and shuts down I-4, the latest on the investigation. Plus a big catch in a backyard. An 11-foot gator captured. We'll take you there live in moments. But first, breaking weather news. Subtropical storm Alberto about to make landfall over the Florida panhandle. Glad you're with us on this Memorial Day. I'm Justin Warmoth. And I'm Kirsten O'Connor. In for Bridget Ellison. Our first storm of the season is making its presence felt from the panhandle to central Florida. We have team coverage across the state. We'll check in with meteorologist Candace Campos near Panama City Beach in just a moment. But first, we want to get with... Meteorologist Samara Coquinas, who's in for Troy in studio, pinpointing Alberto's path. Absolutely. And the thing about this storm is, you know, it's it's going to be a definitely a rainmaker. But here, what we're seeing are the, those of moisture lingering in our atmosphere and the wind. Have y'all been outside? Uh, yeah, no. It's a little gusty. I've been sitting inside all day. <laughs> I went with you out we there. Did we did go outside. We really did. So let's take a look here uh, at what we're working with. You can see the camera, our Spectrum City camera right now. It's shaking because it has about a 16 mile per hour wind with gusts a little bit stronger from time to time out there whipping it around. Temperatures, wow, we're warming up. Okay, we're at 84 degrees and we have seen some sunshine this afternoon just as predicted. The thing about it is, is we're going to continue to heat up from here by a few more degrees at least. The rest of Central Florida along the coastline right around 84 degrees. Cape Canaveral, you're at 83 as well as Melbourne, 82 in the villages this afternoon. And we're not seeing too much rain at this hour. A lot of the showers are still situated offshore, well offshore um, from the Cape. But now what we're, wat we're watching is stuff coming from the West Coast. So you can see those showers right there trickling into southern Sumter County. And some of that could go ahead and move a little bit farther inland going into Lake County. So just be prepared for a few more showers. I'll actually show you the updated track on Alberto coming up in just a bit. Guys, back to you. All right, Samara, thank you. Evacuations have been ordered along parts of the Gulf Coast, and right now three states, including Florida, are under a state of emergency. Alberto expected to make landfall any minute now near Panama City Beach. Meteorologist Candace Campos is there live for us. So, Candace, how are the conditions out there right now? They've really been deteriorating pretty quickly. Alberta runs about 50 miles just south of the area. The rain's gotten heavier, the winds have gotten stronger, and the waves have been getting even higher. We've been clocking wave heights, the latest model showing 16-foot waves offshore. A bit closer, waves have been hitting about 8 feet. But check out the video from earlier today. People were out enjoying the view, enjoying the rough surf. We had some surfers out there that were also enjoying a few of the waves. You know, we always have them every time we talk about tropical systems moving on shore. But we spoke to a duo, one of the one uh, gentleman. He just graduated from college, getting ready to start his career. But he needed to go out and surf with his dad during Alberto. Listen to what he had to say. So the double red flag's not bothering you? Um, no, no, not really. <laughs> What happens if you see the cops or somebody around here? Um, they usually understand that the surfers kind of know what they're doing. I mean, we've we've seen surfers kind of pull people out of the water, so you know, we try to do our best to, to play safe out there. Well, they were enjoying their day, absolutely, but now Beach Patrol has been going up and down the beaches, pulling everyone off the beach, out of the water. Everyone is heeding that warning, sitting back, enjoying it. Right now, we're on our balcony where we're staying. I uh, just wanted to give you a bird's eye view of what Alberta looks like as it makes its way on shore. Of course, we are going to be bringing you live updates on Facebook, Twitter, of course, clickorlando.com. And of course, we will be joining you back here on News 6 starting at 4 o'clock. But again, the very latest will be coming at you again with the latest updates from from the, from the panhandle on News 6 meteorologist Candace Campos. Back to you. All right, Candace, thank you. And anyone heading to our beaches today will have to deal with those dangerous rip currents as well. Alberto churning up the surf on both the Gulf and Atlantic coasts. Lifeguards say if you do plan on going in the water, make sure you swim near a tower. If you're not a strong swimmer, they're saying you might want to avoid the ocean altogether today. And if Alberto is any indication, this could be another active hurricane season ahead. We want to make sure your family is prepared. We're going to have reports all day this Friday, the official start to the season, along with a one hour getting results special at seven o'clock. Again, that is all Friday right here on News 6. We're following breaking news right now in Brevard County. Police say a man was found dead in a neighborhood. Here's the latest from our news partners at Florida Today. They say the man's body was found around 3.30 this morning at a home along Mount Carmel Lane in Melbourne. 
We're told detectives are interviewing people in that neighborhood and that a home has been blocked off with crime scene tape. No word yet on any possible suspects. We'll have much more on this story coming up on News 6 starting at 4. We're working to learn more about a deadly crash that shut down the eastbound lanes of I-4 for hours this morning. The highway has since reopened and police tell us the wreck may have been caused by a wrong way driver. New 6 reporter Vanessa Ariza joins us live now. And Vanessa, you're learning there was another person hurt in this crash. There was Kirsten and right now very little is known about that driver. But what we do know and what we can tell you is that driver was taken to Orlando Regional Medical Center with life threatening injuries. Now go ahead and take a look at this video from earlier today. This is what the crash looked like just hours ago. Police say it happened around three o'clock this morning. They did tell us that it was a head on collision. Now as far as if this was a case of a wrong way driver, that's what investigators are working to determine right now. They're not ruling that out saying that it could be a possibility. Now the eastbound lanes uh, by Cayley Street were closed for about four hours as those homicide investigators try to get as much information as possible as they continue this investigation. Within the past 30 minutes, I have also contacted the Florida Highway Patrol as well as Orlando Police to see if there are any extra updates or any further updates and if we have any information about that person, that driver who was taken to ORMC and what their condition currently stands at. Of course, as soon as we get any of that information, we will pass it along your way. Kirsten. Vanessa Ariza reporting live for us this noon. Thank you, Vanessa. New at noon, trappers just captured a huge gator measured at more than 11 feet behind someone's home. Let's get right out to News 6 reporter Nadine Giannis live at the home on Lake Richmond Drive in Orange County. Nadine, this was the first time you've seen FWC trap a gator this size. Yeah, it's the first time I've ever seen FWC trap a gator, Justin, and this size uh, this gator was 11 feet 3 inches. Even though it was new for me, for neighbors say they're used to it. They've even seen a 14 foot gator back here, and that's why they had FWC's number on hand when they saw this gator right here in this neighbor's backyard. Take a look at just how big it was. FWC had set up traps here on Tuesday, neighbors say, because big gators like this are often a nuisance. This one in particular, neighbors say, had been getting more comfortable creeping into backyards, eating the ducks, and trappers came out and wrestled the gator, ultimately having to put him down. Now, one of the trappers saying they are not allowed to relocate gators over four feet anyways, and this one was way bigger than that. Neighbors grilling out today happy this gator in particular is no longer a threat. This is like in the movie, like the gator man go out and catch his gator. This is real exciting. This had happened before. We had a 14-footer one time, and they caught him the same way. It's that... My daughter and I sat on the porch last week and watched him eat a duck in the middle of the lake. So I know he's around here trying to find food, so that's what he's doing. So I'm glad they caught him. So we're still waiting on official word from FWC on everything I saw with the protocol from setting the gator traps all the way until they took the gator away. We'll have their response at 5. Until then, we'll hear more from neighbors about what this gator had been doing in this Richmond Heights neighborhood. Justin. Nadine Yanis, live for us. Thank you, Nadine. And new at noon, President Donald Trump spent the morning at Arlington National Cemetery making a salute to those who have paid the ultimate sacrifice for our country. This marks his second Memorial Day as president. The president laid a wreath at the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier. He then spoke at a ceremony at the hallowed grounds across the Potomac River. In a tweet, President Trump said, quote, those who died for our great country would be very happy and proud at how well our country is doing today. And closer to home in Seminole County, Sanford held its annual Memorial Day parade this morning. A big crowd came out early to honor the fallen. There were a lot of American flags waving in the breeze. Some great images here. Active military members marching in uniform as well. Veterans waving from their floats and trucks. And many folks came out just to say thank you to everyone who have fought for our freedom. To check out all the Memorial Day events happening in our area, just head to our website, clickorlando.com. A historic city in Maryland under a state of emergency after powerful flash flooding devastated its downtown. But this isn't the first time this has happened there. See how residents and businesses plan to rebuild again. You're watching News 6 at noon. Getting results. We'll be right back.